This is Mike DeCourcy, senior writer for the Sporting News. And we think it's safe, maybe, uh, <laughs> that all the conference realignment is in place for what will be the case in 24-25. As of then, the Big Ten will be an 18-team league. The Big 12 will be a 12-team league. And the Pac-12, well, we don't know what it will be, but we're talking about the significant leagues now. Pac-12 has kind of excused itself from that conversation. And what we're wondering is, once everybody is in place uh, with all of those changes, what will be the best college basketball conference? And who could be better to answer that question besides me uh, than the great Fran Fraschilla, as good a basketball analyst as there is in the country, covers the Big 12 and other conferences for ESPN. So I brought Fran in to ask him specifically that question. As of 24-25, what will be the best college basketball conference, Fran? Uh, that is a good question, Mike. Now, you know, I, I have Stockholm Syndrome, uh, have me covering the Big 12 for most of my last 20 years. Uh, you and I had a great discussion about this, and you wrote a fabulous article that, I, that I've read. Um, it's going to be interesting uh, because – we know there are various ways to measure the power of a conference. If you look, for example, at the ACC, you could make the argument that historically with Syracuse, Carolina, Duke, and Louisville, that you've got four blue bloods, yet I think you'd agree with me that in the last handful of years, the ACC has not been in that top two. Uh, the Big 12, on the other hand, if you go by analytics and the Ken Palm numbers that we all kind of wrap ourselves around, Big 12 has been the best conference analytically eight of the last 10 years. You look at the Big 10 with the success they've had of so many of the good teams. Uh, you can make an argument at times the SEC is right there. I I'm fascinated to see how realignment is going to affect the Big 12 because you and I both know there's something beautiful about double round robin, which both the Big East and the Big 12 have enjoyed in recent years, and the other power conferences have not. It's going to change with the Big 12, and I am really anxious to see how that affects, uh, particularly the analytics of, of how it plays out when we get done with a particular season, and I don't know the answer to that. One of the, one of the points uh, that you made about the analytics favoring the Big 12 has been, one of their advantages has been 10 teams. So fewer opportunities to have four teams. And uh, if, if you have some four teams, uh, they collect at the bottom of a 10 team league, as opposed to having four or five at the bottom yeah. of a 14 team league or a 15 team league, league like the ACC uh, 16 as the SEC will be uh, next year, as well as, as the uh, Big 12 will be. So what does that do? How, how does that impact? Do you think? Well, I, th I think it's going to change the dynamic uh, of, of the Big 12 because, you know, well, well, here's something I was thinking about that, I, that we didn't talk about last week when you were putting together the great story that you wrote. The interesting thing, about, you know, I, I, you know that I coached in both the Big East and the Big Ten. And when I think back to the Big Ten and I think of how great a basketball league has been through the many, many decades, there's so many teams in the Big Ten that I can look at and you can look at and you cover the league on a regular basis and say, great tradition, great tradition, great tradition, great tradition. When we, when we talk about basketball, Illinois, Ohio State, Indiana, Purdue, Michigan State, Michigan. The interesting thing about the Big 12 and its 10-team league over the last two decades is many of the teams that we now think of as being very good in basketball were pulled up um, by Kansas. Um, there, there was a stretch where Kansas won 14 straight conference titles, and everybody said to me, well, how good the, could the league be if Kansas is, quote, dominating every year? And what I've seen happen is we never thought of Texas Tech as being a basketball school. By the way, they're sold out season tickets for this coming season with a new coach. Baylor and the job that Scott Drew has done. Three NCAA appearances in 100 years prior to him getting there. The rise of TCU. Um, the emergence on and off of Oklahoma under Kelvin Sampson, Lon Kruger. So what I really find fascinating about the Big 12 is the 10-team league and the double round robin has allowed teams, I believe, to more quickly catch up to where Kansas is. Um, not necessarily catch them, but have Kansas pull them up by their bootstraps and make this league so competitive. 
One of the interesting things as I was going through this that struck me that the Big Ten has, that, that no other league has, is the, the depth of achievement. Uh, and right. that's been recent. You had you had nine teams in each of the 2021 and 22 NCAA tournaments, eight in 2023. It was very close to being nine with Rutgers just missing. And of course, in 2020, when we didn't have a tournament, uh, there was there there were probably going to be 10 in that field, which would have been quite an achievement for them. And then historically, even more so out of the 18 teams, this is a fascinating stat to me out of the 18 teams that will yeah. exist in the new Big Ten, 16 of them have made at least one final four appearance. That's really very rare among leagues. Big East has nine of 11 of the of their of their membership. Now they they've had nine out of their 11 make it at least once. But 16 out of 18 is quite a number. I think that says a lot about what how competitive that league could be in a couple of years. Well, that's my point. Uh, I was in the league uh, in from 87 to 89 at Ohio State. And Those you, and I talk, years. you talk about this. You know, I, I, I remember Stephen Bardo and I one night in the ESPN studio, the 88-89 season in the Big Ten had uh, 27 NBA players and you know, Michigan went to the final four in that flying Illini were great. Illinois. I mean, excuse me, Iowa with BJ Armstrong and Roy Marble, Steve Smith at Michigan state. Uh, we had an up and coming team at Ohio state that eventually, you know, Jimmy Jackson and, the, and, and his group won two, two big 10 titles. Um, the, the history of the big 10, I think would rival to me what we thought of, of the old uh, uh, ACC prior to realignment. No question that the Big Ten is sitting pretty with now the addition of UCLA and Oregon, Washington and USC. So I can't really say like, oh, this is going to be absolutely the best conference. I, I'm excited like you are to see how realignment actually affects college basketball, because, you know, right now we're kind of a niche sport, you know, like. We I hate to say it this way, but we're kind of on the sideline. We're watching all this football realignment. And all I'm worried about is how does it affect college basketball? And I, I think the one thing that we know for sure when we do, if I were to argue as a good attorney could, that the Big Ten is going to be the best league in the next five to 10 years, I could easily do it. And the numbers would speak for themselves. But I'm not going to do we, that. Today. <laughs> we know that football drove all of this. Yes. But one of the compelling things as we look at uh, what's changed, the landscape that's changed, is that in the Big 12, there's yeah. been probably more conversation about, uh-oh, Kansas at McHale or Arizona at Allen Fieldhouse than there has been anything about what they what that will mean to their football league. Uh, and, of course, with the Big 10, there's still the drive to get the the the, the first national champion out the first NCAA bas men's basketball champion out of the league since 2000 when yeah. Michigan State won it. it. So that 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 exists out there. And then, of course, you bring in UCLA and maybe that drives it forward and, and puts it over the line. I, if I, 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 I we said that there are many different ways to judge this. So I'm going to ask you to before we close, yeah. Yeah. pick your favorite way to do it. And therefore, who that means is going to be the best league. Well, I would say uh, my favorite way to do it is the last decade. <laughs> and and honestly, um, because you and I use our eyes to determine who the best teams are when we get the chance to watch them, I think the Ken Palm numbers, at least in the last decade, have really favored the Big 12. And it's manifested itself on the court, by the way, because of the championships of Kansas and Baylor and Texas Tech getting within a play of winning a title in uh, 19 and like last year with Texas uh, uh, and Kansas State getting to an elite eight. So I could make a sizably good argument that in the last decade, in, in a rotation at the top of the five power or six power conferences, the Big 12 stands its ground. But I think going forward, you it's we're now in uncharted waters with realignment and I'm not going to say it's going to be the Big 12 because of what's now going to happen with more teams coming into the league. I would say, however, if you make me choose Big 10, Big 12 for sure. I think the ACC has got to do something substantial in terms of the improvement of its league. The SEC is too up and down. And, it, and, and the conference we haven't talked about that's going to remain double round robin and I think is on is, is really on a nice trajectory is the, the one true basketball conference 
and that's the Big East, who I think with the addition of UConn, assuming they're not going to the Big 12, by the way, uh, but I think the addition of UConn to Villanova and Creighton and Xavier has made that a league that's going to be reckoned with over the next 10 years because they're great basketball traditions and also the double round robin is going to ensure that the competition stays at a high level. For me, it's it, it's about the depth of the conference and the competition that you get every night. And a lot of people don't look at it like that. They look at who wins the championship and that must have been the best league. Yeah. And I, I will say that I've written about this and I've done research over time. And one of the things that I've noticed is that the deeper your conference is, the more trouble you have in the NCAA tournament. Teams, yeah. leagues, tough leagues do wear themselves out. We saw that with the Big 12 last year when they had seven out of 10, one of the few leagues ever to get 70% of their membership into mm -hmm. the NCAA tournament. Of course, you coached in the deepest in that sense ever in yeah. 1991 in the Big East when you were at Providence and they got seven out of the nine members and Providence was one that just missed. And so yeah. we saw how difficult it was for those teams going into the NCAA tournament. They did not get a final four team that year, let alone an NCAA champion. So what will be interesting to me is that the Big Ten may become or the Big 12 may become the best conference in college basketball after the expansion. But is that a good thing? It's a good thing night to night from November yeah. to, 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 to the uh, selection Sunday. But it's not always a good thing once the ball goes up, when the ball is tipped, as uh, Luther Vandross says, Yes. Uh, on on the song that they play after the national championship game every year. So we'll see how it goes, but it's been great to, to exchange views with friend, one of the best minds in the business and one of my good friends. And so we'll be, we'll wrap it up with that and say, thanks for watching until next time.